That's broken. Broken. And we get a first aid kit in here. And also... There's a typewriter here. Again, ink ribbons need not apply. I've got no use for this. This isn't Resident Evil. Wait a minute, what's this? There's a sheet of carbon paper still stuck in the typewriter. I can still read the imprint left on it. I know it. I know the number of the box. 7453. It can't help him any more. The button key doesn't scare me. So nobody can stop who I am. I don't know who I am. Is who I am is who I am is. Uh, eloquently said there. But hey, nice to have a number code. I'm sure it'll come in useful. Uh, yeah, we might want to keep that flashlight on. Wrong button there. So, with that, we've pretty much checked out everything we can do on this floor for now. So we have that exam room key. Let's head back down to the first floor. Seems like a good option for now. In we go. Overall, though, all we've accessed is a tight little room. There are medical records on the desk, nothing particularly interesting. But it does lead to another door. Which leads to another door we can't do anything with. Nothing here. But he is staring at some shotgun shells in the sink. Third floor patient wing hall, 7335. Another number code. Good to have plenty of those on hand. And stop turning off the flashlight. There's a memo hanging on the refrigerator. Food only. Do not store drugs. No health drinks for us in there. And we've unlocked this door. Okay. So with that, we've checked out everything that was in there. And we got another number code. All these numbers have to come in useful somewhere, right? We've already done everything on the second floor, so let's go check out the third floor. Plank at the ready. Camera being unhelpful. I'll stomp you before you get up again and cause problems with your friend there. And we get a first aid kit. Lovely. Work with me, camera. Okay, not getting to that door at all. And that one is broken. Nothing. Broken. Locked. That's where we came in. And so let's check out this door. It needs a key combination. So since we just found that one in the exam room that was talking about the third floor patient wing, let's put that in. Seven, three, three, five. Once again, a fairly long hallway to deal with. 
But first things first. Let's visit the third room for a very specific reason. as soon as I can. So we get a roof key, and more importantly, freedom from baggage. Yes, sweet glorious freedom. I mean, yeah, I feel bad that she's sick and all, but still, freedom. I can actually fight without her getting in the way. thing, too, because there are plenty of monsters in this area. There now, that's better. Here in this room, we have a rather chained-down box. There's something written on the wall. Louise, I'll take care of you forever. It's my destiny. Right then. So, this particular box has quite a few different locks on it. First, we do have two keys we can use. First, the purple bull key. That seemed to go in here and remove the main lock, but there's still all the chains in place. So next, let's use the lapis eye key. That's one chain gone. Uh, actually, that's all the chains gone. But we still have these two padlocks. Now, there was the memo we read on the carbon paper that talked about a number combination. But they're both number locks. But furthermore, it said it was a button key. So, it's this one. 7453. If you don't remember the number, you can look it up in your memo files on the, uh, the item screen. So it's not like you have to have that memorized. Unfortunately, we're still one code short, it seems. Plank at the ready, nothing. Just a save point and a health drink. Nice to at least know where there's a save point. Okay, mattress is in the way of that door. Broken, broken. Again, there's a cover on the call button. Broken. Hard to remember which ones I've actually checked and not. Good thing it marks it on the map. Here we have this suspicious little drain. There's something stuck in the drainage pipe. The hole is too small. I can't get my hand inside to reach it. Maybe if I had a long, narrow tool of some kind. Well, we do have a bent needle. But it isn't long enough. That at least tells us we are on the right track there. Whoa. Suddenly there is loud noise again. Hi there. Don't startle me like that. 
Man! Okay, let's not check the third room because we don't want Maria suddenly deciding she feels better. And seemingly nothing else to do here. But we do have a roof key now. So, up to the roof with us. Nowhere else to go. Just outside. So we have a door over here, but the lock is broken. This would be the elevator control room, so no help there. It's also a metal net that's rusty and falling apart. It looks like if I push hard, I could move it away. Over this way, there's a journal, but, uh, you know, I really don't want to read that right now. Not on this first playthrough, anyway. That doesn't sound good. Uh-oh. Next time, knock! And so we wake up somewhere else, having crashed through the roof. As one could expect, you're not doing that unscathed. The controller is indeed throbbing right now, because that fall will put you in critical red health. Yeah, that's nice. Fortunately, we have plenty of health items right now. Locked. Locked. Something is written on the wall. If Joseph looks calm, he can be taken out of his cell. And that one's, one, that one's locked, too, but we can come in here. Eh, quite a messy-looking room here. There's something written on the wall. Note the code written in blood. That's going to be important. Good to have yet another number code. Turn, turn, turn the numbers. Better not forget them. So I'll write them down here. The other one, my secret name. So this is talking about turning numbers. Fortunately, we happen to know of a lock in which we have to actually turn numbers. So let's go take care of that, shall we? No further surprises, I hope. <laughs>